that time of week again where we're going to be doing our Stitch Happens video. I hope everybody had a good weekend. This being the first weekend we're of well, our Stitch Happens video. Uh, um, the first weekend of Row by Row. And we had a bunch of people in. Some new, um, some um, current customers, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, this week you will need the same as we've been doing. Um, as far as tools, you just need a scissor, a ruler, and a marking pen. It can be friction, it can be chalk, it can be whatever you're comfortable with. I happen to like friction. Um, it works well for me. One that we're doing this week is this part right here, which is the teal green and navy blue with a little bit of the white background. It's this part right here. It's not hard. Um, it's the same that we've been doing. If you have any questions, I can see comments and uh, questions. So please feel free to post them and um, I will answer you. Right after this video, I will post it to YouTube. So basically in this week's video, it's nothing that we haven't already done. So we're doing flying geese. We're just doing a little four patch, um, some half square triangles. That's it. Very, very simple stuff. Here is the fabrics that I've laid out already. And I've already put together this four patch, which is very, very simple. Um, you, uh, so this one to this one and this one to this one i iron both of the seams towards the green so they automatically become opposites and you're going to put this one on top uh this block here all we're doing is drawing a line from one corner to the other placing our teal square on top and sewing it so that we can iron it back and it becomes like a chisel and this is our flying geese. So this is what I'm gonna start with first. And basically, let me just show you again. All we have is two squares that we've drawn a line diagonally. And we're gonna sew just on this side of the line, which I've already done once, so that we can flip this up and iron it. These are our two different teals, one kind of light, one a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna sew this one on. Good morning, Suzanne. So, let me just iron this now. I do recommend best press as always, especially when you're working with um, small pieces and a lot of seams. It will just help keep everything from stretching a little bit. Um, it really does work well. So now I'm just going to cut off the bulk. And now I just have to put the other piece on. Now you always cut the bulk off and fold it out uh, correctly before you put the second piece on because they're meant to overlap here. And if you don't fold it out, you're not going to get a really good flying geese. So, are you, if, are, is that, are you row by rowing? If so, are there any really cute rows out there that you've gotten already? I have already got ordered a few that I really like. Um, and of course, there is that whole uh, collaborative in Western New York that I really like with a beautiful gazebo garden scene and tons of flowers it's really really pretty i like it have you seen our uh 
row by row juniors for the monsters that is adorable i just love it okay so here's our flying geese if it's done correctly and you've got a good quarter inch seam you should have a quarter of an inch up here so that when you connect this to this you're not going to cross over your point so now we're just going to sew this one to this one and then sew both of these parts together I really like the row by row juniors and if anybody is inclined it's a good size for our um, our uh, donation quilts that we're collecting for Coquina so you can put it together and it would be a great donation quilt that's what's happening with the one that I've made for the shop as a sample as soon as row by row junior is done it will be one of the first quilts for the donation quilts next year now I haven't heard word yet whether we're gonna have 60 uh, they're gonna add an additional class for next year at Coquina but if they do it'll be 60 quilts that they'll be looking for we did 40 this year and I wanted to thank everybody who's donated and helped me with that because the kids are going to love them absolutely love them I know this year they which was the first year we did it we got a big giant card and it's here in the in the shop if you'd like to see it where the kids signed it thanking us and um, okay but I know they're gonna love anything that you can donate as far as the quilts the quilts are roughly 40 by 50 or 50 by 60 they're about nothing larger than that because uh, then they have a chance to fight over the larger quilts and we don't want that and as gender neutral as possible um, because I don't know how many boys and how many girls are going to be in each class so here is our second part now this one um, I iron the seam up so that this one here is ironed down that way these two seams will nest no problem you can put a pin in here I'm not going to because I don't think it, it's needed And I ironed that wrong. Okay, let's try that again. You can put a pin if you feel more comfortable. Um, if the seams are nested correctly, it'll be nice and flat. If they're not nested correctly, you'll feel a bulge. But since this is just one seam, I don't think it needs to be pinned. see this one is going to go towards the four patch for the seam that way it will match up with 
our bottom part. I don't know if anybody, if you saw the email or Facebook this morning that I posted, we have a new line from Northcott coming in. It'll be here either today or tomorrow. Really, really cute for Halloween. It's called Raven's Claw. Um, not super kiddish Halloween. It's got Harlequin uh, pumpkins on it and ravens, and it includes a panel. It's re I really like it. It even has a a black on black damask that goes with it that is really pretty okay now remember we did a draw the line from here to here on this diagonal corner and you sew on just a thread width on this side of the corner so that you can fold this over now I'm going to iron it open I mean iron it over cut the bulk and then sew this one to this one So I'm super excited. I don't get a lot of Halloween. It's not one of, um, you know, the seasons that I tend to buy a lot of fabric for. It's going to be really cute and something that I think um, will go well. But this line is, I like it a lot. I will be posting on Facebook once that line comes in. Now this scene, we are going, <laughs> yep, away from the chisel point. That way it'll nest with our other piece up here. I know it seems like we're doing the same thing over and over again, and we are basically throughout this whole quilt, but these are basic lessons that if you learn them now, will go a long way for you in the future. Keeping your seams as neat as possible and you know folded correctly will make sure that they're nice and flat when you're done, and that in turn will help with the quilting process. When you go to do some you know quilting at the end, you're not gonna have big bumps um, to try and quilt over. Now this one I'm going to pin only because there's two. almost done. This one's a pretty easy block. Now this week I'm hoping to have it done today but there's no guarantee of that. Uh, I'm working on the schedule for classes for July and one of the classes that have been really good that we brought back just because people have asked for it is the, um, uh, and I can't pronounce it correctly, but it's the jacket that we have that Kathy Matura taught back in September of last year. And I will have that hopefully posted today. If not today, tomorrow the schedule will be all set. All right, 
this is what we've got so far so now I'm just going to iron this one down towards the bottom of the this, uh, the block that's where the seam's going to go so as long as you keep the bottom part on top when you go to set your seam and flip it the seam will always go where you want it to go Now all we have to do is sew this one to this long strip to this piece and the block is done. What I told you before is, and I'm just going to remind you, if the background piece is not perfect as far as size cut from here to here, don't worry about it. Um, everybody's seam allowances are slightly different and it's okay. We can trim it up afterwards. It's not going to affect anything. If your seam allowance isn't exact, you could have a piece that's larger or smaller. And with all of these seams that we've pieced together, um, it will change the sizing drastically. Now in this one, we iron the seam towards the white. And the reason I do that is for this part and this part so that we can nest them together. So keeping the white on top, if you set your seam, and press it open. There you go. And this part is done. Say not too bad this week. Getting a little bit faster on different blocks. But if anybody has any questions, feel free to comment and I will answer your questions or comments. I will be putting this up on YouTube very soon, as soon as the video is done. Um, if you need anything, you know where I am. I will let you know as soon as that Raven's Claws fabric came in. And that's all I have. So I hope everybody has a great time row by rowing. And I hope you have a great week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.